Hello. Good, it's working. How is everybody? Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, cool, it's working. So I haven't done a live stream in a while. I keep I keep looking at my microphone, not the camera. I haven't done a live stream in a while, so I figured what a better time to do one than now. And yes, I'm at the shop. I'm I was trying to get a little bit of work in on the Celica. That's what the next video I'm working on is. Hi. I'm going to wait for more people to join. And then uh, I'll start chatting about eggnog. And <laughs> Somebody literally typed that and it's the first thing that came to mind. Why is this thing giving me a notification? There. Okay. So, uh, I figured there's probably a lot of people that are out there right now that might not have anyone to celebrate the holidays with. So by doing a live stream on today would be something nice. So you have something to do if you're bored or if you're working. I know there's some people that are probably working today and they're working <laughs> and they're on their phone or something. So I don't know. I figured it'd be kind of cool to do this for those of you out there that are bored or by yourself or whatever. Uh, so yeah. I'm gonna try to answer, I'll answer some of your questions and then I'll like talk about topics and stuff. So there's actually some kind of purpose to this live stream because I know these can be kind of a, a mess sometimes to watch. So hello from New Zealand. Hi. You love my Datsun Renault? I don't have a Datsun, but okay, thank, thank you. Uh, hi. I'm, there's a Futurama method, marathon on? That's pretty sweet. Have I received any gifts? I'm receiving the gift of talking to all of you right now. Actually, I'm not talking to, technically I'm speaking to a GoPro on a stick, but you get the point. Thank you for the super chat, H3 Lurk Isha. I don't know why I keep like leaning over to read. I can see it from here. It's like a bad habit. Um, someone asked about the CX-90 behind me. Yes, I'm reviewing that next. I was kind of dumb. I, I didn't really think about it, but uh, I took a vehicle to review this week. So I should have took this week away from reviewing a car because I have three car views that I have to edit still. So yeah, but speaking of car, I guess I'll talk about that first. Uh, car reviews next year might be a little less frequent than this year. I've kind of noticed the car manufacturers are uh, downsizing in advertising, which means less press cars go out to the journalists unless they live in like LA or New York or Miami or like a massive city, which means I'll probably get even less cars than I already get to review for you guys. So yeah. There's already quite a few manufacturers that just don't even send cars out to Arizona. Like I get asked all the time to review BMWs and Porsches. They don't, they don't participate. So unless you live in a massive city, there's no chance I'll be reviewing any of those vehicles. And I thought about like renting cars on Turo to review, but there's one, not very many cars in Tucson on Turo and two, I'll have to pay several hundred dollars just to rent a car for two or three days to film a review, which means I'll essentially make zero dollars from reviewing a car, which is not very smart. So, um, and I don't really like reviewing people's personally owned vehicles just in case they break. I don't know. I don't want it to try to be blamed on me if their crappily maintained car breaks <laughs> and they're like, oh sweet, you'll fix it. So, uh, oh, I missed the super, let me click on those super chats. I missed, oh, I got two notifications for the same one. And that one from Hayden, what airframe? I didn't work on an airframe, I was age. So, I didn't, I didn't work on aircraft. I worked on Hobarts and Cygnuses and all kinds of pieces of age, depending on what base I was at. 
Um, mostly, I liked to work on Hobarts and Cygnuses, though. Those are my two favorite. Beto Nines never really broke. It was mostly just Hobarts because they're older. Uh, but I did, like, I, the only time I really had to work on B809s is when <laughs> one of my friends, maybe might even be watching this, uh, he went to lunch and he disconnected the batteries and there's dual batteries on a B809 and he just like flopped up the battery cables in the air and then went to lunch and we came back to a shop full of smoke and he completely melted the 809 down from the battery terminal slowly just coming down but not where they should have been. So I replaced all the harnesses on that thing. That was fun. But they never really broke. I went way off topic there. Anyway, yeah, that's the stuff I worked on. Do I miss the Nürburgring? I do miss the Norge life. I miss Germany in general. It was really nice there. The people were really nice. And the food was amazing. I love German food. Which is weird because there's like not a lot of German restaurants in America. But their food's delicious. If there are any German people watching right now, your food is delicious. I liked... uh. Zegoiner schnitzel, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, Zegoiner schnitzel, and uh, Gorgonzola schnitzel, those were like, my favorites. But the irony is the my favorite restaurant I went to to eat German food was owned by a Turkish family. So it was a Turkish family making German food. So it wasn't really, it was Turkish food. It was Turkish German food, but it was delicious regardless. Uh, let me answer some more. Do I want to import a car from Japan um no I already bought the next project car like six months ago that I'm gonna do after the Celica I thought I would have been done the Celica a little bit sooner but because I did the Celica Supra halfway in between I kind of pushed things back and then I started on the the Super Duty just because I had availability for Fred to paint the cab so I kind of had to like get that thing ready to get painted so it's kind of pushed little delays into the Celica. But I've been working on the Celica for the past three days straight, like put in a good probably 14 to 16 hours so far of work in the past three days. And that has translated to like five and a half minutes of footage for the next video that I'm making for it. So just so you guys know, when you watch these videos, it, they're not easy to make at all it was a shitload of labor <laughs> i probably should have dragged it out made it a little bit longer and talked more but i don't i don't know i don't think you want to watch 10 minutes straight of me adjusting a quarter glass regulator so try to make it more interesting uh, let me read some more more read more of your things um the super was aw awesome i liked the car it went to a good home it's now uh, the new owner, Jay, he has it. Hopefully he's enjoying it. Uh, the car hauler. I got the rest of the lights for the car hauler. As I'm not going to make a video on that. But yeah, that car hauler will come in really handy. And also, technically, that is a covered garage space now. So that's a bonus because I don't have enough space, obviously, with the shop only being a 1,000 square feet and renting multiple storage units to park cars in. Because if you leave a car outdoor here, like, this is going to be destroyed in a year from the sun. So, holy crap, Super Chats just flooded in. Uh, thoughts on turbo engines when replacing V6s? I like turbo, but you can't ask. So, like, most of the time when you watch car reviews and people are, like, uh, putting down a certain type of powertrain, it's different for me because there's nothing on a vehicle I'm not afraid to work on and I enjoy working on vehicles. I don't care how complex it is. So when I review cars, I'm not thinking like the average person of having to maintain it. I know I like talk about how easy it would be to maintain, but when I'm thinking of easy for maintenance, I'm not thinking about oil changes and light bulbs. I'm thinking about how many hours would it take me to drop the subframe on it and pull the engine or stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm probably, you should probably listen to regular journalists when it comes to ease of maintenance because I, I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? So like if you're asking if like, in terms of turbo engines being less reliable, obviously, because 
things that spin at high rates of speed obviously will wear quicker like a turbo but I, I don't know I don't care like when a turbo wears out buy a new turbo and replace it and because I do everything myself I don't take it to mechanic shops or dealers I don't think about cost of maintenance so I don't know I <laughs> I can't answer your question I like turboed engines so I know the answer you're probably looking for is yes naturally aspirated engines are probably more reliable the simpler the easier uh another super chat you want to learn more about the Celica uh how to make a scarf what <laughs> what how to make a scarf from penguin belly buttons huh uh thank you for that strange super chat anyway let me scroll down uh thank you tim brown for the super chat you like supercharged engines i like every engines even crappy cars that are like not reliable i still like them i like non-reliable cars because then it's like fun to see if you can fix the parts of non-reliable cars and make them reliable and improve upon their design and then you could potentially buy a car for really cheap that's neglected because people get rid of them fast because they're not reliable and then you can change a couple of things and make it reliable and then you have a cool car that was cheap i don't know uh did i put full coverage on the trailer um i didn't wax the roof That wasn't the question you're answering, but what do you think? Maybe robots should drink eggnog. Ro robot egg robots don't like the things that taste good to people. So if you if you could make eggnog out of liquid sulfur, then that would probably be up a robot's alley. Uh, get a Z32. I had a Z before. And I agree, that would be a fun car. But I already got the next project. So I bought, I'll talk about this in f five minutes. I'll change subjects and I'll talk about another topic. You don't know what that topic is, so that's your enticement to keep watching. Besides, what else are you doing today for those of you that aren't working right now or sitting around a family? Maybe you see those people every single day and you just want to like go sit in a closet and <laughs> sit on your phone and look at Instagram or something. So now you have reason to stay and watch this. Uh, thank you, Jason, for something about a penguin. Mm -hmm. uh, robots drink molten sulfur. Is there a, what is like, can you liquefy sulfur? sulfur? Sulfur's like, isn't that what the the salt lake, isn't the salt lake in Utah, isn't the reason why it is the color it is because it has a lot of sulfur in it? I'm obviously not a chemist, so that's a real question. Uh, there's a lot of people saying happy Festus and Christmas and stuff. Merry Christmas. And happy holidays. Hey, happy days. I don't know why so many people that celebrate so many different things out there. Uh, thank you, Mark Bauer. I almost called you Bowser. Mark Bauer for the super chat. I am passionate about what I do. I like doing this stuff. It sucks sometimes working so much, but I chose to do this, so I can't complain. I could be working a crappy job and hating my life every day. How's that? Does that work? Yeah. How's that? That was my GoPro. My GoPro was the reason why it stopped working. Back. Okay, good. Well, that ha I think that happened. Didn't that happen last time? I think it's just the GoPro and the internet at my shop sucks. So, oh well, I probably dropped quality from using, I don't understand why it drops quality. Cause like this is a brand new MacBook Pro. 
you think it would have a decent webcam, but oh well. At least it's working now. Sorry for everyone that doesn't like technology. <laughs> I can't help this shit. It happens. So anyway, it's still 1080p? Okay, cool. So I don't have a potato on my my MacBook. I guess I'll just, I'm not even going to bother using the GoPro next time. I thought the GoPro would be really good because it was in, oh, that's probably, I had the GoPro in 2.7K. So maybe that was too much for the internet connection. It's crazy it, the internet sucks that bad and it's literally almost 2024. Anyway, um, yeah, so the next thing I was going to talk about is uh, giveaways and merch and all that stuff. Obviously, I don't have merch right now. There is no merch store. And um, I'm not working with Power JDM anymore. So uh, I like took your guys' feedback into consideration and stuff. And it's really hard because I can't like, I'm not a, a major company, so I can't like hire professional logistics and stuff. So uh, Angel's fiance, Karen, has a Etsy business and she does like t-shirts and merchandise and stuff already. So she already has experience in doing this stuff. She's super, super artistic, like really cute designs and all the stuff that she makes. So I asked her if she'd be interested in doing it for me and um, she's down for the challenge. So it will be easier because she's here and she's local and she's going to be the point of contact for everything and she's super nice and she's a hard worker so um she's gonna design some stuff and uh i am not gonna do a car giveaway probably if i do the next one it'll be like middle of next year or a little later because i want to give her a chance to like get with the flow of things and get used to it and also uh I don't want to just like constantly do giveaway, giveaway, giveaway. Cause I mean, I'm like, that might get annoying for some of you. And I would rather make my channel enjoyable and not like, it's just another thing trying to sell you crap. So, um, even though the doing the giveaway, obviously YouTubers do them because they make money doing them. And that giveaway on the Celica Supra was able to at least, pay for a, a dent in the amount of stuff I bought for this Celica build since I don't have sponsorships and I buy all the parts out of pocket and um yeah that car that like car broke me <laughs> like I spent too much money on the Celica so that giveaway helped but I don't want to just like shove that crap down your guys' throats all the time so um I did buy a car to do another giveaway on and it needs a little bit more work than the Celicid Supra did. Um, and it, it needs paint and GoPro's gonna fall. Uh, also, I bought an engine for it. Yeah, you fall on the floor. So I have that car sitting and waiting, but I'm not gonna start that until the Celica is done and I've already started on the next main project series for my channel. And then I'll think about doing a giveaway for you guys. So, um, yeah. How about showing a blueprint classic? So, like, I'm, I'm, the, I don't plan on ever doing muscle cars on my channel. So, <laughs> hate to, hate to disappoint anyone watching, but those aren't really cars from my era. So that's why I'm doing the Celica Supra because so many people ask for me to do old classic muscle cars, and I mean they're cool and all, but they're not really my cup of tea like I've never had a desire to own one and I've always had a thing for Japanese cars that's just always been my jam and that's why I did the 74 Celica because there really wasn't any Japanese muscle cars and I was like well it'd be kind of cool to make one so yeah other than Beetle that's the oldest car I'll probably do for a while the next car is not that old it's it's old, I'll give you a clue. It's old enough to be a classic for sure. Yeah, what well, holds a 25 years as a classic? It's definitely a classic. That's your only clue. But it's, it's a millennial era car. 
So all of my millennials and Gen Z people and uh, Gen Xers will probably appreciate this card too. Or older generations that like newer cars, but it's still old. It's newer, but old. That's your only clue. I'm not, I don't want to give it away. Patrons already know. Patrons, you know, and that's it. And people that see my private Instagram stories because I shared the car when I bought it. So, so instead of Chrysler Conquest. No, but I would totally be down to doing a Starion eventually. If I imported a car, I'd import a right-hand drive Starion. That'd be pretty cool. Gen Alpha. <laughs> How old is the, what is the oldest Gen Alpha? They were, Gen Alpha is what, 2015 and up, 16? So math, go math, they're still, they're still little kids. Um, it's still frozen? You're still frozen. <laughs> it's, it's not frozen anymore. Am I, I should just like randomly pause and like, and see if you guys can tell if it's actually frozen or if it's me. Do a lot of. That would be such a pain to get parts for. Um, I'm, curi I'm curious. Of the people watching this live stream right now, what generation are you? Just put the letter. Wait, what is boomer generation? Uh, what is your letter? X... What is U, W, X, U, your W? Is the boomer generation actually generation W? Damn, there's a lot of Gen Xers in here. Man, M, oh, that's millennial. Boomer, millennial, X, millennial Z, you're on the cusp. Generation Y, <laughs> that's what, Millennials are or why, right? Okay. Boomer, someone's a Peugeot generation. You're you're awesome. Millennial. Wow, I'm surprised there's a lot of millennials. X, lots of millennials, lots of X, some boomers, millennials. I'm not seeing a lot of Gen Zs. I saw a couple Gen Zs. I saw X Z. Wait, how can you be XZ? You just skipped millennial completely. You're like, I have nothing to do with you idiots. I'm skipping you. W. So a boomer is W generation. That's zillennial. What years are zillennial? I'm curious. What what constitutes a zillennial? Your generation ZZ top. You're awesome. Is there any, what is, what is great? What, what came first, greatest or silent? It was silent, then greatest, right? I'm trying to remember who's, for, who's older, greatest or silent? It was, I think, I think the greatest generation were the ones that fought in World War II, correct? It seems like the most it seems like the bulk of you, though, were... So, so silent is older. Greatest, then silent. Oh. Oh, okay. So the greatest was World War One. I? I should know. I'm, like, actually into history. I should know this, but I don't. Greatest is World War Two. Okay. Well, that's interesting. The... Uh, the genera I I was like really I don't know what I was expecting for who was actually watching this right now. No greatest is World War. II. Yeah, that's what I said, right? Hmm. Bender drinks alcohol. Bender does. Oh, you're right. Bender does drink. Yeah. I haven't watched Futurama in a while. You're a you're a ZZ top gen. <laughs> What, oh yeah, I asked someone what Zillennial was. What is a Zillennial again? That I would imagine is, well, if it's spelled with an X, that I'm guessing that means like you're an elder millennial, if you're a Zillennial. What is, 
generation two SR5 Toyota 4x4? What? That's not a. That didn't answer my question. Generation DuckTales? Yes. <laughs> I like that. I used to watch DuckTales. Uh, you're a newborn. Robert is a newborn. <laughs> Sweet. You type well for a newborn. I was waiting for someone to answer my Zillennial question. And I'm sure someone did like six times and you're probably like, hammering your keys right now like you idiot i just said what it was gen z is 1996 and up seven or six 96 96 is the last year of millennial right millennial is i thought millennial was like 82 to 96 Zillennial is 79 to 82. I guess I'm not a Zillennial then. I am a millennial. Okay, so Zillennial is 78 to 82. So that's like the breakfast club group, right? How old were the people in the breakfast club? Or are they just like straight up? They're just straight up Gen X, right? Yeah. Mm. You're 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 a Z lineal? A Z what's a Z lineal? Is a Z lineal like born in the 90s? Like late 90s? A Z lineal is like Biggie and Tupac are oldies you <laughs> that didn't make any sense thank you for the super chat from athens greece hello from athens greece a rock stuck in the tire there's a rock stuck in the tire how the hell can you see that from here they're like little croquettes i don't see how you can see that Basically, your generation is the one that grew up with a lot of drugs. Oh, boomer? Boomer, boomers were the like the hippie generation, right? You got like in Forrest Gump, all of Jenny's friends, all of Jenny's friends were boomers. Forrest Gump was Forrest Gump a boomer? Yeah, because he fought in Vietnam, so he would have been a boomer. Because my granddad fought in Vietnam and he was a boomer. Wait, no, he wasn't. No, he was born in, my granddad was born in like the 30s. What the hell generation is that? No, that's boomers like 45. So was Forrest Gump too, was Forrest Gump not a boomer? Was Forrest Gump like a silent generation? What the hell was, was Forrest Gump? You drink plenty of eggnog. When you drink eggnog, do you have alcohol in your eggnog or are you just straight egg, crack an egg and put it in your eggnog? Boomer is 45. So Forrest Gump, I don't think Forrest Gump was a boomer. I think literally the movie says what year it was when Forrest Gump was born, right? Gump was a boomer. Okay, Gump, Gump was a boomer. Hmm. Interesting. So today, and if you, after today, when you're done watching this live stream, you can be like, today I watched this idiot on YouTube do a live stream, and I learned that Forrest Gump was Boomer. You're welcome. I provided you a wonderful service today. I provided you the knowledge that robots potentially could drink eggnog if it's sulfur-based, and that... Forrest Gump was a boomer. <laughs> run, boomer, run. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Why or am I not at my parents' house? Because my some of my parents live in one state and some of my parents live in the other s state. And I have, I'm a slave to YouTube content, so I had to work today and tomorrow. 
I'm going to be filming stuff tomorrow, too. I'm, like, I'm not working as hard as I should be. So it's going to screw me next week, and I'm going to be hustling hard to keep up with videos. But I'm screwing off while also doing work. So it's real. The stuff I have to film next on the Celica is so hard to film and make interesting because it's so labor intensive and hard to, a lot of it's hard to film. Like I probably have at least five or six more hours left of adjusting the windows in their track to make them go up perfectly into the glass and then align because there's no B pillar. Like how the hell do you make that interesting? And I got to do it. I know a lot of channels would probably just not do it, but I don't want my car to be a piece of shit. So I got to do it. Thank you, Amy, for the super chat. Oh, sorry, Amy and Maya. I missed the second part. Uh, Gen B4 stand. Gen B4 stand. Hmm. With your... What I wonder if how much B4 stands have changed. I think there was like a new there was like a new gen B4 stand when I was getting out. I just remember rusty rail sockets always getting full of water. I'm glad I never really had to work on non-powered that much. Non-powered age. Shout out to anybody watching that knows what the hell non-powered age is. Thank you, Jerry Jennings. Um, I'm trying to think what else, what else should I, t a topic. So I talked about car reviews and if you missed that, then it was before I froze and I talked about the merch and stuff and future giveaways. I'll have more to come on that for you guys early in the year. And it's going to be more than just t-shirts. That's your, I'm not telling you everything because I want some of it to be a surprise, but it's going to be. Some of it will be actual useful stuff. So when you're buying something from me, you're not just buying garbage YouTuber crap. Like I put a lot of effort into one of the things I'll be selling. That's actually a quality product that hopefully maybe one day it could like keep going after I am not going. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like really hard on, I speak them rhymes um tool review tool review well their earlier albums are probably my favorite uh well it was the new one of the newer ones i like Ten Thousand days when did Ten Thousand days come out i'm i've always been more of a fan of perfect circle than tool and dabble into Pussifer music. There's that one Pussifer album that has uh, Mila Jovovich does a song on it. I never knew she could sing. I like that song. <laughs> you didn't think I was going to go there, did you? That just happened. Also, fun fact, Maynard from Tool lives in Arizona. He has a winery here. I want to visit it someday. I don't really drink, although wine is delicious. But I really want to, I'd love to visit it just because... Maynard's like one of my favorite musicians. Robot droppings. What do robots poop? I would think old grease, old nasty, stale grease. Like when you go cheap and you put the mineral based wheel bearing grease in and it gets mixed with water and it just looks like bird poop. That's what robots poop. They don't poop bolts. Hello from England. A uh, custom 10 millimeter and penguins. <laughs> a 10 mil, imagine a 10 millimeter penguin. Like an actual penguin that's 10, a live one. A live 10 millimeter, I think that would be a, penguins don't give live, penguins are egg, penguins come from eggs. I wonder if anyone's ever ate a penguin egg, like scrambled penguin eggs and seal bacon. <laughs> that would be, is that a breakfast in Antarctica? I had one of you was stationed. I don't know if you're, I don't think they were military, but they're at McMurdo Station in Antarctica. And I got a postcard from Antarctica. It's over there on my desk still. 
that like completely my jaw dropped when I saw that. I was like, holy shit, someone's from Antarctica is watching this. How do you even have internet? Do they have like Starlink in Antarctica? That's great. I mean, you must have internet with all the research and stuff going on in Antarctica. Hmm. This is a weird live stream. Planet of the Apes with Mark Wahlberg. That's a good movie. What's your favorite Mark Wahlberg movie? I have to really think about that. The other guys is pretty good. Or Ted. Ted is, the first Ted is pretty phenomenal. I laughed so hard in the first Ted movie. But the other guys is really good too. Boogie Night, Boogie Nights. Mm, yeah, that's pretty good. Transfer, you know, that Transformers doesn't get enough credit. That The first one he did, I liked that movie. That was a good movie. 21 Dr Jump Street, absolutely. Love that movie. Mm, favorite MRE? The Chili Mac. That's a that's not even like a question. There is no like debate. Chili Mac is the best MRE, period. I couldn't eat it now though, because I'm like now I'm allergic to gluten. I'm probably allergic to gluten because of those stupid things. It was so good though. Dazed and confused. Mark Wahlberg was in Dazed and Confused? What, he had like a small role in it? Was he really? Now I have to go watch Dazed and Confused. I don't remember him in Dazed and Confused. MRE is nasty. They're not that bad. They just don't, you don't poop when you eat MREs. Invincible airplane boomers. Uh, our you wish you were allergic to gluten? No, you don't. It sucks. I hate being allergic to gluten. I was I was like became allergic to gluten like four or five years ago. I couldn't figure out why I was sick and I was having all kinds of weird health issues. And I cut it out of my diet and I drastically got better. It really sucks because it's in everything. Like random dipping sauces, they use gluten to thicken sauces because it's wheat flour. It's, it's in everything. It makes it a nightmare. I used to be able to eat anything and I can't eat dairy. I used to love dairy, can't eat dairy anymore. Unless I want a pimple farm. The other guys, the other guys is a pretty solid choice. The Happening. If you had to watch, oh, I, so I, I want to watch a movie tonight because it is Christmas Eve. I was really thinking about watching Home Alone because like, other than Die Hard, like Home Alone's a pretty solid Christmas movie. Or uh, Bad Santa. Bad, Sa uh, Bad Santa's probably one of the best. But I haven't seen Home Alone in a long time. Shart. Someone just typed Shart. That was, you could have typed anything into this live stream, but your contribution was, I'm going to type Shart. Great. The Big Lebowski, that's a solid Christmas movie choice. I like that idea. Talk about locks carts. Why? <laughs> Make sure you bend your locks carts, but don't park them on asphalt. You just watched someone talk about locks carts on a live stream on YouTube. I thought about buying a piece of age as a, pro as a project. I was like, what piece of age would be useful to have? I think, honestly, if I was going to buy a piece of age equipment, that would be the most useful. And then FL1D. Because think, of, like, it is a pretty useful thing. You got a little generator. You can, like, plug crap into it. A light whenever you need a light. And, they, I mean, they're fairly robust. I think if you owned it yourself and you actually did PEs and didn't just pencil whip them, it would probably last a long time. Shout out to anyone watching right now that pencil whipped floodlight PEs. <laughs> uh, Scrooged is on Pluto TV. I didn't know there was people on Pluto, let alone television there. Violent Christmas? I don't know what that, I've never heard of that. You know what would be a good Christmas movie? No one suggested this, but I, I wanna watch it because I haven't seen it forever. Blood sport. Frank Dukes. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in so long. I bet you, I guarantee there's gonna be at least five people watching this right now that are gonna go watch Blood Sport because I said that. Because it is such a good movie. 
stinky booty. Red Dawn. Red Dawn? That was the first one or the remake? It really wasn't that good. Deadpool. Yeah, the new one should be coming out soon. Is anyone here excited for the new Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer that just released? I don't have time to play video games. I wish I had time to play video games because I bought like the VR PlayStation 5 headset thing and I have like a racing sim. And I've probably played Gran Turismo maybe once in the past six months because I never have time. But I, I want to play Grand Theft Auto 6 so bad. It looks so awesome. Hmm. Uh... This is like hard to, how many, there's 1,988 of you in here. 1,988 people avoiding their families and watching me on a live stream. Worst age equipment to work on? Mm. Honestly, jammers are just huge pieces of shit. I mean, they're fun to drive sometimes but they got it was like working for a rental car agency they just got the crap beat out of them <laughs> when i would say something that people would probably use as an answer for that but i enjoyed was mules i actually liked working on hydraulic test stands i don't know why i think because a lot of people didn't like them because they're just messy i liked working on them uh, November 2035. Now? Oh, now 2035. What? You see 23, I see 1978. Well, I had like 3,000 once watching this. I don't even know how the hell that happened. That was insane. Monkey dog. Donkeys. <laughs> I'm, I gotta stop reading. No, I like answering your guys' questions, but when you just type nonsense, I'm like drawn to it. I can't help. Um, I should probably talk to talk about some more stuff that has actual substance to it. So, Super Duty. The that thing is all I put it in the last the blooper compilation video. It's all body worked. It just needs to be painted. Uh, and I bought the diesel conversion kit for it. I'm not going to say who because it wasn't sponsored and it was expensive. That's like the death of me is just having to constantly buy expensive parts for project cars. Because like I know a lot of YouTubers, they expect money plus the part for advertising it on their channel. I just like ask companies like, hey, could you help out with the, the actual part? And I'll just advertise it in the video. I don't even get that. It's, I don't know why I have like the hardest time getting stuff sponsored. So the only company that's been like awesome from the get-go is Bilstein. They're always like, hey, if you need anything suspension-wise, let us know. Which is awesome because like I used Bilstein suspension before I even do, did YouTube. So I like it when it's stuff that is I would have regularly bought. It works out really good. Um, how fast do I go during the braking tests? Generally within five mile five miles per hour ish of the same speed between each vehicle in a roundabout speed where braking tests would generally be conducted ish i don't like giving actual numbers because i don't want you to take this shit too seriously i'm not like car and driver or motor trend so i try to like make my car reviews serious but also i don't want to be like that serious where it's like super competitive analyzation between the vehicles that's why my car review scores are nonsense i mean there i actually do base like the bean score like i'll i take the zero to 60 into consideration so it's a one to ten scale and i figure for a modern car the slowest acceptable would be 0, 60 in 12 seconds, and fastest is 2 seconds. Because let's face it, like 0, 60 in 2 seconds, there's a few vehicles that do it, and that's, that's like, to me, that's a 10. And then a 0 would be you do 0, 60 in 
12 seconds. So I take that and I use that into figuring out a bean score, but also torque comes into factor. So if a vehicle has really good low end torque and it gives you more of that gut shove, uh, it'll, it'll sway the score higher. So it's not an exact science. So like I actually do put thought into these. And then the, the hard one is the cookie score, the value, because all cars are stupid expensive now. And what it was hard for me to wrap my head around it because wages haven't kept up. So we see the price of new cars and we're like, oh, they're ridiculous. But then I did like the conversion rate on my Graham's Ranger and what I have the window sticker to it, what she paid for it in 1994. And that converted in today's money was $39,000 for an XL single cab four by or XLT single cab four by four, 39 grand. That's a lot for a, a XLT single cab four by four with a manual. So like car prices for as a whole, there are some outliers, but they kind of are following like a trend. We just can't, most people can't afford them because the dollar is worth monopoly money now. So, um, but yeah, that's why I don't have like an actual, like what are those things that go in your windshield that actually measure zero to 60? A, if I'm gonna do that, I need to be on like a, an actual like closed circuit test course. And then to do that, I need access to a racetrack and I don't have access to a racetrack. So I can't afford to rent a racetrack, just do car views. And I don't have like a, access to one anyway so uh it's 133 in athens and you're still 133 at night or the, so it's christmas in athens still a rock stuck on the tire on your left bumper <laughs> what? that's really bothering you that there's a rock st stuck in a tire right okay i'll i promise i'll pick the rock out of a tire at a point in time. Tucson, I don't have access to Tucson drag. I mean, there's an awesome, yeah, Tucson drag strip would be sweet because they have such a long no prep area after the track. I don't know still if it's long enough to do a, like a braking test. I don't think I have enough run up without driving on the prepped surface. Not that it matters because I can't, I don't have access to that racetrack. Acceleration would probably be enough room. Acceleration is shut down really quick, but yeah. Send the rock back to Mazda. <laughs> put, it, put it in a little like one of those little Ace Hardware yellow paper baggies, <laughs> but like one EA rock, <laughs> stick it in there, give it back to Mazda. dog fart frank duke frank dukes what other european car would i own besides the audi there's a lot a lot of european cars that i would want to own i wish i could just like bang out projects really fast but my ocd won't let me just half-ass things and i i don't know i like doing like in-depth projects but if I could do a European car, I'm not saying this is going to happen. So don't like get your hopes up. I love the 135 eyes. I think those are awesome. Um, so yeah, oh, a clown shoe M3, the M, M sport, like the shooting brake style. Well, those would be cool or not M3, sorry, Z3, Z3 M. You know what I'm talking about. One of those would be really cool. Uh, I thought like a Triumph TR, what's the door wedge, TR7? <laughs> that would be kind of cool. Make like a, a rally car out of it, like a Group B era looking Triumph rally car. That'd be kind of cool. Um, yeah, an Elise or an Exige, that'd be sweet. Uh, or mid 2000s uh, AMG C63, that'd be really cool. Uh, I think stuff that I'd want. 
Hmm. Maybe like a 1980s Alfa Romeo. Like the... Did we get a GTV6 in the States? We got a... No, I don't think they sold that here. I mean, obviously you can import it. I'm trying to think what ones we actually were sold here. A GTV6 would be really sweet, though. Or... Um, the Fiat 124 Abarth. I really liked that car. It sucks that Fiat disappeared in the States. Because the 500... I thought it was a cool car. I knew someone that owned a 500 Abarth for like five or six years and never had any issues with it. Not saying it's impossible to have problems with it, but they were a mechanic, so that's probably why they didn't have issues. But they had like other cool cars that probably would have did well here, like the Panda or the Punto. I, they should have sold those here. I don't know. I think, I think when car companies like pick what models to bring to the States, they screw up and they like miscalculate the US market or they just do terrible marketing because there's cars I think that would have done well here uh, a 4C I love the Alpha 4C I wish I could have reviewed a 4C I wish I could review a, um, whatchamacallit a Julia Quadrifolio I've always wanted to review one of those but I never had the chance there's a lot of new cars I wish I had the chance to review that I don't get the chance to I know a lot of people want me to review BMWs, but I don't know, like BMW just boycotts Arizona. They don't want to send press cars here, I guess. So, uh, thank you, the Coyote, a Renault. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. There's a lot of, so like a Renault Clio Williams, love to own one of those. Uh, Peugeot 106 Rally, a 205 Rally, or even a GTI, love to do one of those. That was the new Alpine that's in MF Ghost. Also, if you haven't watched MF Ghost and you loved Initial D, what are you doing with your life? Because it's like such a perfect follow-up. There's just enough little Initial D like things sprinkled in there that, yeah, I'm liking that show so far. There's some like weird parts of it that I'm just like, oh, it's kind of weird and creepy. But as a whole, like the car aspect of it, yeah, I think it, they did a, a good job. I missed a bunch. So I got like a bunch of super chats all at once. Primus. Uh, 54. Godzem Kamooks. <laughs> and Ruby. Thank you for the super chats. How long am I doing this for? It's 444 right now. An Opal Manta? Yeah, that'd also be sweet. There's a lot of good European cars. Oh, uh... Um... Alancia Delta. I'd love to own one of those. Although, if I had to import a car to have, like, to keep, I'd probably do, like, a Peugeot 205 over... I know that sounds insane to pick a Peugeot 205 over... Lancia Delta, but Lancia Deltas are super expensive now, so we're like for the good ones at least. Uh, shout out from Canada, thank you, golf addict. How do you play golf in Canada? <laughs> it's like you must have a short season to actually play golf there. A Tommy Kayara ZZ2, someone likes to play Gran Turismo. Hmm, classic mini. Mm. They're neat, but I was never, like, super big into minis. They're neat. Just, I don't know. Mm. Oh, you were from, I were, I were from, I was from New Hampshire. I always is from New Hampshire. My stomach's growling. I did see the YouTuber that's doing the Ferrari-powered Alpha. I've been trying to follow that. That car is super sweet. There's a couple of automotive channels that I follow recently. A lot of them are like lesser known ones too. But yeah. Uh, R5 GT Turbo. Um, yeah. That'd be sweet. A De Tomaso Pantera. I don't know if that's what you meant or you just like Pantera. Both are ex excellent. <laughs> so that'd be crazy if like if one of the members of 
Pantera had driven a Pantera, it would be like Inception. Ice cream or donuts? I don't know. I can't eat dairy or gluten, so I'm just kind of screwed in that one. Um, how fast do I go when I say that's enough? It's it's kind of different. It's kind of different in every review. I kind of like. I don't know. It's it's usually like in a roundabout, same ballpark speed. Uh, thank you, Scott, for the super chat. Oh, was there a question mark? I did. Any tools in my Christmas list, wish list? A bigger shop. That's what I need more than anything is a bigger shop. I'm trying to make that happen, but I put in a video, well, two videos ago, I asked if there was any general contractors in Southern Arizona. I didn't get a single response. I got a couple of useless emails that had nothing to do with it, which did not help. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm having a lot of trouble trying to get that to happen, to build a steel building, to build a shop. So I don't know. I mean, I guess it kind of works out because interest rates are really high. Well, they're coming back down. But renting a shop is like literally setting money on fire and the shop is way too small for how much money I pay. So it sucks, but at least I have a shop, I guess. But I need that more than anything. I could I could make a lot more progress on project cars if I wasn't wasting so much time during the day looking for things because I have to like stack stuff all over the place and then I can't find crap and then I have to play musical cars constantly. I probably waste an hour a day at least playing musical cars in here or trying to like move crap from one side of the room to the other. So that way when I'm filming, it just doesn't look like a cluttered mess in the background. It's, it's a lot of work. So yeah, that's something if I could have anything, it would be getting a bigger shop. And I'm not gonna rent a bigger shop. That's just stupid and a waste of money. Stargate Puddle Jumper. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, Jonathan. Knock. That's a cool spelling of knock. Get a cheap hot water heater and hook it up to a pressure washer. I don't really need that. I have a, I, I have a, that. I just don't use it. More trailers. <laughs> that doesn't help me for working. Uh, work on the MR2 is amazing. Well, at least now I can get the MR2 tuned. At least now I have a way to tow it and to get it tuned. So that will happen along with the Ranger. The Ranger is tuned with the exception of the very tiny little table for cold start. My cold start, I tuned it when it was like summer. So it was really never that cold. And then I tried redoing it when it was actually cold, well, like in the 40s. And then it just ran like crap when it was warm out. So like, and it's really hard tuning that because you got like a couple seconds to make the changes to the map and then the truck starts warming up. So everything else is tuned on it except for initial startup. So the idle's super high when I start it, depending on the ambient temperature outside. And um, yeah, I just really need to, I could figure it out if I had time to waste and do it myself, but I don't have time to just spend a day sitting there screwing with it. So yeah, I need to get that uh, taken care of. What size shop am I wanting? I'm probably going, well, I'm gonna have to live in it also. So I was gonna build 8,000 square feet and there'll be like 2,000 square feet of living space. And then I'm gonna split the shop. So I'll have like a dirty shop for doing this stuff in and then a clean shop. So when I'm dry ice blasting stuff, all of the crap in the shop doesn't get covered in junk. And then I have like a clean parking area because you can't really park cars outside in the sun in Arizona because they'll either get eaten by pack rats here or the sun will just deteriorate the paint and rubber and plastic. So I figured that would be enough room where I don't need more. So that's like enough room to store all vehicles in there and then film car views without a bunch of clutter in the background. So it's like nice and visually appealing during car views. So yeah, paint booth, no, I'll just, 
As long as Fred always has a paint booth, I just rent Fred's paint booth. What YouTube video would I recommend for a noob wanting to paint, correct, buff, and polish? Uh, there's like a detailing channel that I always would watch in the UK. White Details, I think what it's called. I liked his channel. I would watch his videos whenever I watched detailing stuff. Uh, out of t no, I can't put, I can't, I don't own this property, so I can't put a shed. A shed doesn't help me. Uh, how cold does Tucson get? I mean, it snows here, like on the outer rim of the city, like Mount Lemon has snow on it, I'm pretty sure right now, so. Uh, what would I sell to get a shop? I wouldn't sell anything. Uh, oh yeah, ammo. I've watched some. He did when I was doing the dry ice blasting. I watched the ammo's dry ice blasting videos. He's like very informative without being biased. That's what I liked about his. He was like straight facts with his dry ice blasting video. Uh, do helicopters? <laughs> what? <laughs> helicopters. Mount Lemon. It's not spelled like a lemon. You know what they should do? And I wish, like, I knew how to do it. Because they have the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. Mount Lemon is a beast of a road and it's paved all the way up. It would be so sweet if once a year they had a sanctioned hill climb just like the Pikes Peak Hill Climb up Mount Lemon. It would probably generate a lot of, like, revenue and tourism and stuff. But I'm sure, like, people aren't gonna like that that like live on the mountain or i don't know i think it's like for one day it'd be so sweet to have a sanctioned hill climb there it'd be awesome uh i the celica 100 percent is not for sale when it's done absolutely i don't care if someone said a million dollars it's not for sale um and amx so if i all right so if i ever did do a muscle car it'd probably be an AMC, Amex, or Javelin. I'll say that much. Because those are really sweet. <laughs> Get to the choppa. <laughs> I remember I was deployed once. And an airman yelled that over the radio. I don't want to tell the whole story of what happened. But <laughs> he yelled that over the radio. And everyone was dying laughing. He didn't say chopper though. He said get to the has. It was really funny though. Uh, build a 205 hill climb car. I have the focus. <laughs> if I have to, if I'm going to build a rally car, I got to finish the focus. I thought about like letting Angel finish the body work and he can make videos on his own YouTube channel on the, on the focus just so it gets done. Cause the focus videos did terrible. Like nobody wanted to watch that. And I make the money to buy the parts and pay the overhead on the shop from ad revenue. And if the videos do so terrible that it's, I literally can't afford to build the car, it sucks. So like the focus I had to, I didn't give up on the project, but I gotta get past the crappy part of body work because those are videos that not a lot of people like to work. Like on the Celica, I was able to get through it fast enough, but the body work is super extensive on the focus and it was just like bombing. So I'm not gonna make videos that you guys don't wanna watch. But on the flip side, I obviously don't wanna do the opposite extreme of that and just make clickbait garbage just to get views. So it's like a happy medium. I gotta stay right in the middle so I can afford to do what I'm doing, but also not just make garbage content. Uh. Would I want to live in Europe? I, I mean, I liked living in Germany, but I like living here. I like Arizona. It's a cool channel. Yes. Oh, yeah. I never, for those of you that don't know, Angel does have a YouTube channel. His channel is Rookie Pilot. It's called Rookie Pilot because he literally had his pilot's license at age 18. He owned a plane. He had an aircraft. I don't know. I think he was like maybe 19 or 20. I don't know how old he was when he bought an aircraft, but he literally bought a plane. Like he's such a super hard worker that he had a pilot's license that young and owned a plane. So his channel is Rookie Pilot, if you look it up on YouTube. He's doing a six, early 60s Mustang. It's not a restoration because the car was in really rough shape. He's just like modding it. I don't even say it's a resto mod. It's just going to be 
a fast, like, I think the best way to relate it, if I had to relate it, would be in the movie Tokyo Drift, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, that Monte Carlo, it was Monte Carlo, right? Yeah, I think it was Monte Carlo. In the beginning, kind of like that, but like a Mustang. That's how he's doing it. So, yeah, you should check out his channel if you like that kind of stuff. His videos are pretty good, too. I've been trying to teach him as much as I can about filming and videography. So. Like the unicorn? No, not on that level of extremity. Judge Judy twerking? Someone literally typed that in a comment. Judge Judy twerking. What? Why? Why would you even think about that? You'd let me drive your 2003 Hyundai Accent? Thank you. That was very kind of you. You love the fast. I think everyone loved that was like the underdog car of that movie. That car was sweet. Sweet. Somebody said they subscribed to Angel Food Cake. When will the Celica be finished? The biggest hurdles I have left on that car, uh, biggest time suck type hurdles, is painting the engine bay and underside of the hood and trunk lid. I didn't do it when I painted the car because I'm doing a satin clear coat on the engine bay, underside of the trunk, and underside of the hood. So that's gonna take a little bit of time, but I'm gonna have Fred shoot it. So hopefully I can work on something else while he's shooting it. I'm gonna body work the bay. So you guys will have to watch another body working video, but it's just a bay. Uh, I have to, the headers are done. Uh, I still have to get a drive shaft made. Haven't figured that situation out yet. I, a car had a two piece drive shaft in it originally, but Charlie was explaining on multiple different reasons on engineering level of why I should do a one piece drive shaft. Uh, so I probably have to do a one piece drive shaft for it. For me, the stuff that's labor intensive is a lot of this little stuff that I've been dealing with, like the past three days of labor of doing the window regulators and getting everything lined up and putting the molding and weather stripping on. It's a lot of work and it's hard to film. And then I got to do the wiring and the ECU. That should be not super hard. Uh, I, I got to follow up on it, but uh, I don't want to say who sponsored. So I did get a sponsor for the ECU. I'll wait until it's like actually in the mail and on the way before I say that. But um, that was like a huge help that was able to land that. I shouldn't say I don't get a lot of sponsorships because I got one this year that really helped and that was that ECU for the Celica. So that's coming. Um, I'm missing parts for the engine still that uh, I just have to do. Like I gotta, I'm probably gonna have the valve covers. Uh, I gotta drill out the baffles on the back side and clean them because I, I soda or not soda blasted, but wet blasted the top cover. So now I got to take the baffles out and clean really well. So I might have those maybe powder coated. I don't know. I was thinking about just like leaving them raw because I think that would look better closer to factory ish. And then there's just random stuff like I gotta get an alternator, figure out the AC, get an AC compressor for it, the belt routing. Uh, make sure I got clearance for the radiator. I got to get a radiator. I'll have a radiator for it. I got a lot of little things. And then like random brackets and stuff in the engine bay. So I am going to put a timeline. I would say between April and June is when I would like to have the car like 90%. I would like to at least have it running by then. And then maybe there's just like little onesie twosie things that I got to work on like tuning and stuff. So that's that's my plan but i also don't want to put a time constraint on it because i don't want to like cut corners so uh there's a lot of people from new hampshire right now hello <laughs> hello people hello fellow new hampshireans i see you guys i might take a trip i was thinking about maybe taking a I don't know if you guys would be into that i kind of thought about taking a trip back home this winter if hopefully it snows because I know right now you're just getting tons of rain back home. But if it snows, I was thinking about taking like maybe a week and filming something back home. I don't know, maybe like rent some rent a snowmobile and go snowmobiling. Or I would like to go there when it's like super bad snowy weather and just 
film some of that, <laughs> like rent a four four wheel drive truck, make like I don't know, some kind of a vlog. I could turn it into a car review at the same time by renting a newer pickup truck and reviewing that truck. <laughs> so there's like something purposeful to it. I don't like doing vlogs because they feel narcissistic to me. And that's why I never take vacations. But if I could like somehow make it so it's travel based, so you're learning something travel related, but it's also automotive because I rent a vehicle. If I could rent a cool vehicle and incorporate that into it so it's still automotive, I don't know. I'm trying to think of ways I could make that interesting. Rent an all wheel drive car. Yeah, but they all suck unless I get one off a of Turo. I guess that's it. But I'd have to like rent it from like Boston. That's probably the, where the best Turo rentals are at. So yeah, maybe I'll do that. I wanted to go to the Tokyo Auto Show, but I screwed up and didn't realize that that's literally in a couple weeks. So I totally missed the ball on that one. It's kind of too late. Plane tickets would be super expensive right now. And I didn't, I've never been to Japan. Oh, I, I don't even know if my passport, passports are good for 10 years. Oh, my passport's still good. I don't know. I've never been to Japan though. I'd like to do that because I really want to go eat some sushis. Rent a Model Y. I don't think that's my choice if I was going to be driving in the winter in New Hampshire. Especially, I would like to go off-road. So it's probably going to be a 4x4 truck. Honestly, I'd just try to rent a, a TRD Pro Tacoma or Forerunner would be ideal. Or uh, a, a New Frontier. I really like the New Frontiers a lot. My stomach's growling so hard, but I'm trying to do this live stream a little bit longer for you guys because it's like the holidays. And I don't know if there's anyone watching this that's bored as hell. And if this ends, they're going to be like, nothing else to do there's so many other better things that you could be watching on youtube than me right now i'm gonna see how many people stop watching because i just said that it's true there's like way better things you could be watching on youtube than me isn't there like a new y files out or something <laughs> that's what i want to watch tonight there's also a lot of good that's another thing uh i would like to try to do next year I can't do it until I have a bigger shop because I have no like space to do it here. I've always wanted to do a podcast. I've been wanting to do one for a while now. And um, I just think it'd be a lot of fun because I would have like just some random people on there. So that's what I'd probably do with the Give It The Beans channel. I haven't given up on that channel for those of you that are subscribed to my second channel. I have a, I have a car review that I filmed six or seven months ago that is like 60% edited. The problem is I was like doing the same editing quality on those car reviews as my main channel and they take like 10 to 12 hours to edit. And I don't have an extra 10 to 12 hours in my life. If I did, I would be doing laundry or grocery shopping with it. So that's why I, I kind of use the other channel and do an automotive podcast over there, which I think everyone that subscribed to that channel would probably de be down for that. So that's my that's my plan for the other channel is do that. And maybe I do like an auto news thing because there's a lot of cars that I don't get access to review that I'd like to talk about. So I'd probably throw that over there too. So that's my plans for next year for the other channel. As long as it's something that I don't have to edit, I can dedicate an hour or two to just film something. And then that would that'd be pretty cool to do over there. Yeah, an automotive podcast. So yeah, that's something I'll work on next year. I'll get some crazy ass random guests for you. <laughs> like just go to a car dealership and get a random car salesman or something. I don't know. I would just, I think it would be fun. I don't know if I'd be able to get like other automotive YouTubers to go on my podcast. There's a couple that probably would, but I, I know a lot of them, they probably wouldn't want to. 
I think it'd be a lot of fun though. B is for build. I would ask Chris if I had an automotive podcast. I would ask Chris. He'd probably be down. He's really nice. <clears throat> He's also like super cool in real life too. Uh, Small Sarah and I hung out with him and Chris Fix and um, at SEMA. Super awesome people in real life. The Sex Pistols? <laughs> Interview the Sex Pistols? Are all the members still alive? That'd be wild. Interview a, a music. I would probably do that. Music if I could find musicians that are into cars also because I love music, that would be cool. Japanese K car view. I would I guess that's a that's an option. I could like like don't the big channels like Motor Trend and stuff, don't they do like their long term reviews? I remember Motor Week did them, the long term reviews. I guess I could like the only thing is if it costs more to lease a vehicle to do like a long-term review then i would make off the video in ad revenue i can't do i can't pay money to make a video i have to be able to survive i'm not rich so like i can't just like buy cars to review for you but if i could like lease one at least make enough money off ad revenue to pay for the lease of the car i could do like long-term review for you and then I would have done a Mitsubishi Mirage, but it sucks because they just discontinued it because they've always wanted to review a Mitsubishi Mirage. I'm really sad that that car got discontinued. I was pissed when they dropped the manual, and then I was even more sad when they dropped it altogether. We need more cheap cars. Do an auto zone review? Like, get a random auto zone employee and do a podcast with them. I would do that. That'd be fun. Ask him like what the worst situations they have with um, customers coming in. That'd be really fun. A mock e mod. R.I.P. Fiesta. They killed off the Fiesta overseas. No, did they? That's so sad. I'm so tired of car companies killing off cars, and all we're stuck with is big expensive SUVs this super sucks we need more cheap small cars I guess the problem is is like people just don't buy them but like I bet you people do buy them it's just like if they don't sell a billion of them they're just like ah oh, screw it and they give up I like small cars small even if they're crappy small cars are cool like what was the little the little Chevy one that was in Transformers this like Rob Deerdick had one with the circle headlights. There was like a 1.4 turbo version of it. That thing was sweet. I've never driven one, but I always liked them. I don't even care if they're reliable or not. They were a cool little car and it's sad they don't make them. I think it was probably just like a rebadged day woo that Chevy stole their design and <laughs> sold it as a Chevy, but still that was a cool car and they dropped it. Yeah, Geo Metro. Those were cool. The Spark. Was it a Spark or... No, it was... Yeah, the Spark or Sonic? No, the Sonic was... Was it a Sonic? I don't remember. A Veo? No. I think it was a Sonic. Vega. You guys are, like, talking way long ago. I'm talking, like... It was in the Transformers movie. Yeah, Sonic. That thing was sweet. They looked cool. I just... I think they looked cool and... I don't know how fast you could make them, but they were cool. There's a couple of cool cars right now that I don't think anyone's buying. The, and it sucks that it's only offered in, in an auto, but I don't think it would be very hard to manual swap, is the new Impreza RS. I really liked that car when I reviewed it, and I'm pretty damn sure it would not be that hard to manual swap one of those. And for as cheap as they are, like you could buy a... It, like, it depends on your budget, but it would be sweet to get one of those new Impreza RSs and manual swap it. Or you could just, I don't know how hard this would be, but you buy one of those, you put the FA24 from the new GR86 and BRZ in it with a manual all-wheel drive and have a 230 horsepower manual transmission all-wheel drive Impreza RS. That's what Subaru should have sold it as, the 2.4 RS like that. 
But still, I th it's a really good car as is. I don't think those are going to be around for very long. I bet you they'll get dropped. Uh, it also was the another one I, I really want to do is a like a newer project that will probably get. I think it is getting discontinued. Is the Nissan Versa? You can currently buy one of those with a manual transmission, and I was just like having vibes of like the old b14 centras and like people would modify those like what could you do with that versa like figure out i don't know i don't even know much about the engine that's in that versa i've never reviewed one but if you turboed it see what that engine that's in it can handle boost it see how fast you can make one of those little versas there are some cool cheap cars out there that no one's buying Someone said butthole surfer interview. 1.6 Versa. So what is their, what is their one, their modern 1.6? I, I reviewed a Sentra. I think that had that engine. Yeah. I forgot that engine. I'm rambling, aren't I? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, still like a, a solid amount of you. No one is dropping off on this live stream. It's still the same amount of people watching it. So that's why I kept it going. 2.5 liter, the five cylinder golf with a manual. Those are sweet too. I think there's still, you can still buy a, a Jetta, a new Jetta with a manual. Those are cool. I think they're pretty cheap. I think you can get the manual Jetta under 30 grand. Pretty sure. It was like a 1.4 turbo that's in it. That's a cool cheap car that I'm sure is going to get discontinued in the next year or two. Don't, I don't, somebody said that. I don't ask people to hit the like button. Thank you, Steve, for the super chat of a dinosaur coming out of a, a chest. <laughs> not like, not like an aliens dinosaur coming out of your, that just got weird. Uh, welcome to cookies. Oh, the cookie sounds so good right now. I'm so hungry. One and a half hours in front of 2,000 people. No, it's one and a half hours in front of a laptop sitting on a cardboard box on a hydraulic table in a shop that I have the heater on and forgot to turn it off and my armpits are super sweaty right now, so I don't want to raise my arms so you guys see that. Tech talk. 1.4 turbo engine is an oil burner. Which one point? Oh, the. Are you saying it's a diesel 1.4? Maybe in other countries. Or are you saying that it? Are you saying that it burns oil as in it's a diesel? Or are you saying it burns oil as in it's a crappy engine? <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. I, I'm sure there probably is a diesel version of that overseas of the Jetta, but they don't. They don't sell a Jetta in Germany, do they? Or it's called something different. I don't think like Mexico, it's called the Bora, right? Is it still called the Bora there? I remember that was like the cool thing to do was to put Bora badges on your Jetta. I forgot what the Jetta was called in, I don't even think they had a Jetta in Germany. I don't remember seeing any Jettas when I lived in Germany. Uh, your first car is an 85 IROC Z. That's sweet, those aged well. Yeah, Jetta is not sold in Germany. That's what I thought. In, in Mexico, you have both the Jetta and the Bora. Did not know that. I wonder how hard it is to import a car from Mexico to the States. Because every now and then, I'll see like Peugeots and Renaults and stuff driving around. I think I saw a Dacia driving around with Mexico with Sonora license plates on it be super sweet to I wish it didn't take me two days to review a car because I would like put it out there like someone from Mexico bring me your Peugeot to review but it takes me it literally takes me two days to film a car review so that's not practical for a lot of people your first car was a 91 Accord sweet that's a good that's a good body style for the Accord. Although I have to say my favorite body style Accord is probably the 94 to 97 two door. That's a, that's a like a really good looking generation of the Accord. 
uh, with antlers, Bob Barker. <laughs> What's the movie where Adam Sandler and Bob Barker, uh, Happy Gilmore? How hard are those seats I got for the MR2? How hard? Depends on how you're saying hard. hard. I'm guessing you're not saying hard as in the actual seating surface. You're saying like, like in terms of how gangster are those seats, the confetti, they're, they are, they're hard. <laughs> that just got weird. Uh, a 1974 lasagna, mmm, lasagna. What? I couldn't even read that. New, the new tundras are around. I don't even know what that means. Where did, where is this live? Where is this live stream going? Dacia Sandero. I'm, I think this is a good, I know there's still 2000 of you watching, but I'm getting really, really hungry. And I think I've lost all ambition to do anything more on the Celica today, but I, I have to, I have to wrap this up. I gotta go edit a car review for you guys. So I'm gonna spend the rest of the day editing a car review and probably a good part tomorrow. So I hope everyone has happy holidays and don't feed your robots eggnog, unless it's sulfur, sulfur nog. That's really disgusting. It probably smells like farts, a glass of farts. Go enjoy your glass of farts. Bye.